Hi. Hi, Samantha. Yes, I was muted because I'm still moving around and doing stuff in my house. Hello, everybody, and happy Monday. Um, hi, Heather. Everybody want to tell me where they're from? I'm here in Brooklyn. It's a little bit hot. Not as hot as before. I'm glad. Hola, Pablo, como por Salamanca, como estás? And I, my guests are all gone, quasi. Um, a set is coming back to pick up their luggage because I'm such a nice host. I am also about to start construction tomorrow. And I'm going to do an Airbnb uh, Facebook Live about it because, oh my God. <laughs> Um, can you, Sue, can you see the, the screen that says the reviews and stuff like that? Um, so we have Francis Green, oh, Sandra from Spain. So we have somebody else from Spain. Look at that. Uh, cause I am nice host too. I know I do let my guest check out late. Hi everybody. Can you see me now? I have like really high lips today. Um, and I hope you can hear me. You know what? Let me just put it on. I can see, but not you. Well, you're going to see me in a second because I just um, put on the camera. All right. So, um, hi, everyone. Hey, Kathleen. Is that you from my, my Brooklyn, Kathleen? <laughs> oh, my God. Guys, you have no idea. I mean, I don't know if you... Look, I'm trying to fix my hair right here. Um, I don't know if you... If all you do is Airbnb or if you do something else besides this, but I only have two listings, two itty bitty listings. Um, one shares with me, the other one is a private apartment. And oh my lord, it's just sometimes I feel like it's a little bit crazy. Um, I had Four girls on the top floor, and then I girls, the ladies and women that were women, and I had um, a couple on the middle floor. All of them were here for this festival called Afropunk, which I have heard of it. I've never been to it. I have been interested in going. I feel like I'm a little bit eh, not the same, the right age group. But I heard that it was they had like a blast and everything else. But thankfully, my guests are gone. I am. Um, you know, so so that is a good thing. One of them, uh, my Chinese guest, he got sick and he had to call like the ambulance, picked him up from my house on the day he arrived on Friday. And, and I was like, oops, I hope you're well for tomorrow. But he, he was fine. And, you know, I don't know what they did to him in the hospital, but he's fine. And he went to the concert and he's gone to China today. So, okay. So we have Chevy from San, San Jose. Um, Elaine is telling me picture perfect for it. My Kathleen is my Brooklyn girl. Um, anyone else in the room? We're going to give uh, people a little bit of time to come in and realize that we're here. We're starting. Um, I have a, a great presentation for you guys because, you know, we love reviews. And, and it's so – hi, Kathy from Rochester. Um, we, you know, this is something new in our society, um, and not. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm incorrect. It's not new, but it is. But I mean, before it used to be word of mouth, like, okay, so who did that for you, and who do you recommend, and things like that. But now with the internet, and you have reviews from Yelp to Google to everything else, um, so it's just all of these things, and it's all about the reviews. Because how many times? You know, on Amazon, you you read the re I read reviews. Um, oh, we have a couple of New York Cities people here. Oh my God! Wait, who's from Nigeria? I I lost Nigeria here. Ooh, we have. I don't I don't know. I don't want to kill your name. A Ade eight from Lagos, Nigeria. Hello. I know I usually get this girl from Cuba, which I'm always excited about. <laughs> Alexina, man, I, I was just saying my guest just left. Um, so reviews are such a prime thing nowadays, especially now in our society. We just go in and the review can take you or break you. And I just want you guys to be very aware of what a review can do 
And even a negative review, how can you make it work for you? So, so I'm, I'm really excited about today's class. I also taught this class at the Airbnb Open last year. It was a great class. Um, there's a video of the Open. Ooh, uh, like on if you want, get on the Facebook group and talk about that, about why you guys are asking for a refund, because if not, you're going to take over. Um, we have a lot of people that talk about all their, all, everything that happens. And let me just give you um, the email for our group, our listing. That let me just. I think I don't know if Pat, my assistant, is in. I cannot see her, but okay, it's one of four. Let's start this party. Let me know again if you can see me and hear me. All right, so you're about to see the presentation. All right, it's one of four, we're in. Okay, so today's class is called Reviews, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and how to make them all work for you. So I do think the FB group, um, the Facebook group is amazing. Um, like I always say, this is not an Airbnb event. I'm not sponsored by them. They do know of me. They do not give me money to do these events. They do not give me anything besides my hosting fees whenever I have guests in the house. Because uh, I know a lot of people think that I do work for Airbnb, but I do not work for Airbnb. Okay. My preference is you to stop multitasking, you know, turn off the TV and just pay attention. It's just we're going to do this nice and quick and just update your Facebook later unless you're telling people, hey, come on over. All right. Now, um, as you well know, or maybe you don't, if you're new to my world, I started working on my Airbnb in 2010 when the economy shifted. My career as a producer went with it, and I found Airbnb, and this is the old logo. This is when I was starting out. And in 2012, um, Airbnb got me into speaking to different pressed and the state government and the city government about the legal issues of New York. This is Brian Chesky, one of the founders of Airbnb, which is the reason why I'm there. I was talking to a group of hosts and telling my side that story and how Airbnb saved my home. And I still to this day, I'm very grateful for not just saving my house, but also the changes in my life because of Airbnb. Right. In 2014, I created the consultation company to teach you guys all about Airbnb in 2015. And now in 2016, I am I was at the Airbnb Open as a host educator in 2015. And I am very happy to announce that I'm going to be teaching again in 2016. Um, they haven't told me which topic I'm teaching. I gave them two different topics, and I'm trying to, I'm waiting for them to tell me what they want me to teach. All right, so today we are talking about the review criteria bad reviews, listing description, how do you pull the information from your reviews for your listing description, for your listing name, and then reviewing your guest. I know a lot of people get a little hung up on that and we're going to talk about it. So review, it's the definition is a basic formal assessment or examination of something with the possibility or intention of instituting change if necessary. And this is important for us to realize is that, you know, they're giving us an assessment and examination of our homes. And it's so personal for us because it's our, it is our homes. All right. So the review criteria is what Airbnb asks a guest. And if you've never been an, a guest before, my biggest recommendation is for you to do it. You will learn so much. Um, things that you will never think about. Um, you will learn how a guest feels. And at the end of the day, that is the bottom line. We want to know what they feel like, how they are, um, and and deal with those emotions, okay? Are they excited? Are they comfortable? So their first uh, um, the first question that Airbnb asks when, they're re when as a guest you're reviewing a host is the overall experience. This is when they go detailed. They also give you start on this, but this is the review that is seen on your listing, okay, and that everybody sees. At the moment, they're still asking for to review on cleanliness. How clean is your space? Did you change the sheets? Was there any improvement? And if there is, if they, and this is, they give you star ratings. So this is from one to five. 
And I believe this, I, I can ask, please don't quote me that Evelyn said this, but I believe that if they give you three stars or less, then Airbnb prompts the guest to say why they gave you that star rating. Why did they only give you three stars? So if they give you three stars on cleanliness, they're going to say, okay, so how can I, this host improve their space? What can they do? Why is it that you giving them a three star and not a five or four? All right. So cleanliness, accuracy. How accurate is your space? Are you giving them the right information? Is it, you know, were there in the best that you said? Was there the space that you said? And I know that there's a particular host, and she mentioned this in one of the um Heather. I, I don't understand the question. Is that just for cleanliness or all of them? That's for everything. And the, the question about if they give you three stars or less, they will, they will ask why because they want to know why and they want you as a host to know why. I got dinged on accuracy um, and I don't know if you guys have seen the, the picture of the narrow stairs. I had it on, my, on the page, on the opt-in page and on the email that I sent out. But basically, I guess I, I have a photo of those stairs. It's the interior stairs of the house. And they felt they were too narrow and that I did not say that on my listing. They ding me on accuracy. I don't know how many stars they gave me on it, but it was enough for them to have to give me a reason of why they ding. So, so I got an email of there, and you're gonna see it here. They gave me, you know, they gave me their description, and then right underneath it, it says, um, "Hey, I could see your stairs. You're not saying how small, how narrow they are." And we spoke about this in the group. And look, the whole question becomes like, "Well, how, what can I do?" Um, yeah, well, and they're too narrow. They are narrow. It's an old house. It's 120 years old, at least, if not older. Um, and these are the original stairs. It's, it's a Brooklyn home, so. And mind you, these were not older people. They were um, probably in their 30s or early 40s. They were not heavy. They were fit. But they felt that I did not clarify and I was not accurate enough given the description about my stairs. Hmm? Okay. Now, value. And value is such a weird thing for us to be reviewed on because it becomes like, well, did you feel that you paid too much money for what you got? which is one of the reasons that I don't hike up my prices towards what Airbnb says that I can't. For example, on my private bedroom that shares with me, they get a private bedroom and they also get a private living room and their own entrance, but they need Oh, even if they give you four stars, thank you, Elizabeth. I thought it was three stars, but um, thank you for letting me know that it's even with four stars. Uh, so that space, I charge from $100 for the first person up to 110 on the weekends, independence. And sometimes somebody tells me, oh, you could charge up to 150 But I feel like, I'm sorry, they share in the space. Yes, it's beautiful. It has a backyard and everything else. But also the prices around me, um, if, you know, if they're paying like 150 170 for shared space, I don't think that is right. And I'm afraid of being dinged to my value. Okay? Now. Communication, how, you know, does, is the guest about to arrive and they don't even know, they have not, never heard from you? And I know you are not like this. And the reason why I know that is because you're here willing to learn. Not everybody's the same way. You're very few. You're very, very few, very um, special people and hosts because you're willing to learn. But look, I have stayed as a guest where I don't receive an email from them. They're very like, oh, well, I know that they got information from my page, but I a guess sometimes it's hard to get. And that's me being a host with experience. As a newbie guest, and you have to remember that that's who we're dealing with, or even if they're experienced, they don't have all the information at their fingertips. They don't know where to look, okay? So one of the things I do for communication is I send them an email. I have a template before when they book. I have a template that I send out immediately. It is one of the messages that is saved on my Airbnb platform. And it says information from like, this is the house that you rent and this is the address, this is my phone number. 
Um, I ask for their email address and I give them mine. So I say, this is my personal email address, if you can share yours. Then I ask for details about their trip. And then I share a bunch of links of things to do in New York, um, which it gives them like, oh, you know, it already sends them this like, hey, um, you were, um, you, you, I'm already taking care of them. I'm already thinking about their trip, okay? Yeah, and look, Sandra, like as Sandra's saying, um, some hosts send the info and that's it. And they don't even send you info, all right? Um, so it's it's just really just, they don't send you anything. It's like, okay, I'll see you when you arrive and, and you're sort of a little lost. You're like, oh my God, why? Um, Sandra, you asked me, what are the comms paying or share space in your area? You mean that my competition, um, they pay about the same. It's, you have to remember, I'm in very competitive New York. We have about 30,000 hosts in New York and they keep growing. <laughs> so just in my neighborhood, it's about, um, about a thousand. So I'm, I'm very careful about pricing. Caroline says, I think sometimes hosts shy from communication when English is a second or third language. Perhaps some hosts will benefit far from templates of standard English information that they can send to guests. Yes, Caroline. And I'm actually, I am creating a membership site for hosts where I'm going to be providing all of that from samples of reviews and information and templates on how to write because of that. I had a, um, Sue is saying I had a very snooty host get very angry at me for taking too much, for talking too much to him. He was only the only one though. Yeah, it's just, look, I mean, people are very weird. Um, I communicate with them. I'm very clear on my communications and that's because I also know what it's like being on the other side and not getting the information. All right, so we are reviewed on communication more like the star system, all right? Check-in or arrival, how easy was it? Uh, you know, did you tell them what the kids were at? Was the process easy and smooth? Or were they standing outside for an hour in the cold and the rain, um, not even knowing, you know, what to do to get the keys and not being able to hear from you, all right? So we are reviewed on that. That, again, is the star system, not a writing, not a paragraph of a review. And location. So we are reviewing location. Is it a nice neighborhood? Did they feel safe and things like that? And I know there's been a lot of controversy about it. But I'm going to say this. Look, guys, I, I haven't been a guest for a little while, even though I've been a guest this year. But on our dashboard, we see this, right? This is um, my, my share space. This is what we see. So we see that, you know, the all of those things that I just spoke about, the overall experience, the cleanliness, the accuracy, the value, communication, arrival, and location. And every time you click on that, it gives you the information. This is on your dashboards on stats. In the past, the your listing, you could see those, but not anymore, at least not on mine. This is what you see. What you see is basically accuracy and cleanliness. And communication. So you're not seeing location anymore. You're not seeing value anymore. And you're not seeing arrival of check-in. Okay. Um, what, um, Elaine is asking a question. If you get five stars for accuracy, how can you get less than five stars for location? Because location has to do with how's your neighborhood. Um, you got to remember that this, well, how people see it, um, and this is, again, my opinion, is, is that it's two different entities. Do you describe your home accurately? And maybe you did not describe your neighborhood accurately. Maybe you didn't say, hey, look. Okay, so in Paris, when I was at the Open, we, we were looking for neighborhoods that were near the conference um, or that it was in a, a big train ride to, to the conference, and we stayed at this neighborhood. And there were some working ladies at night. He didn't mention that on the review. We didn't feel unsafe, um, but it was a little bit like, oh, they're working girls. And I was there with my cousin and other women. Um, so we sort of like, okay, we need to make sure that people don't think we're working as well on the corners or, you know, where do we stand or what do we do? But it was really interesting. And he didn't mention that. But, you know, had I not been a host as well and also what I do for a living, I probably would have said, if I was just a guest, I would have said, oh, this is a sketchy neighborhood. Um, overall, you have received. Well, you see, but Alexina, you see all seven categories, but I don't anymore. 
And you guys know that Airbnb pulls things all of the different times, all right? Um, so this is what I'm seeing now. Alexina out of California still sees all the different categories. Um, so it all depends on where you are and if you are a part of the beta. So this is what I'm seeing on my own listing, okay? So, and look, Caroline, I have been doing, because I'm not in Manhattan, and I never say I'm in Manhattan, I'm in Brooklyn. Um, so people ding you for that. So, um, you know, and so what I have done in reference of that is, um, this is from a Chip Conley class that he did last year, was well, one of the things he taught us was, say three things guests love about your home and two things they don't in your description. So you start your, your profile and then in your description, you write, these are three things that my guests love about my home. The comfortable bed, how clean it is, my backyard, right? This is, or how quiet the house is in the neighborhood. Two things they don't love, they wish it was a private apartment and they wish it was a Manhattan. That's it, I'm already telling them immediately, it's not a private apartment, it's a shared space, and it's not in Manhattan. Just in case they didn't realize that, look guys, you have to remember a guest, for the most part, I think I believe right now it's over 60% of guests book through mobile. So it is really hard. They don't book through a computer on a desktop and their website. So it's really hard for you to say, oh, you know, and sometimes apartments and listings come up on your review, on your, when you search, that you don't realize that they're not in the specific area you were asking. Like they might be asking for Manhattan, but some Brooklyn apartments will come up because they're good apartments. Like my apartment, I have almost, you know, 230 reviews and all of this other stuff. So, so things will come up and people don't even realize it. Okay. So yeah. And, and a mobile is horrible, horrible. Okay. Yes. Um, Pablo is right. Um, for you to become a super host, it depends only on the overall experience, but the overall experience, you know, it's sort of like, it's complicated. All right, let's move on to the next thing. You have 14 days to review. Okay. And you have 48 hours to edit that review. So you review your guest on day 10 and you have 48 hours to edit unless the guest completed the review. All right, so there's 14 days, 48 hours, that's it. 14 days, you cannot make any more changes or if you review your guests and they completed the review, they cannot, you cannot edit it. Because then what happens, what they're trying to avoid is for you to, if you got a bad review, then for you to come out and say something nasty about that, all right? Okay, now, bad reviews, and I know we all get them. And, and I love this quote because it's, I have forgotten my rave reviews and memorized my vicious one, and I think you can all, you know, please say yes or no, that you, if you have any bad reviews, that you remember those reviews, right? Um, it's just human nature, we're going to review we're going to remember those reviews that are not great or that they're confusing and you feel like, oh, I don't know about that. All right. So, you know, I, if you have any bad reviews, do you remember them? But do you also remember your good reviews? Um, and so we're going to talk. The big, the first question you're going to ask yourself, like Chase Reese says, to respond or not to respond. So instead of to be, is to respond. Are you going to respond to this review? Right? And if the answer is yes, if you decide to answer that negative or not positive review, I say wait. Wait a little while, wait for you to calm down, wait for your emotions to be um, not, you, for you not to be so hot on, under the collar, okay? So this is when a guest reviews you with a negative review, you already review your guest and now you're responding to that review, okay, on your listing. So wait, state the facts, okay? Don't state like emotions, um, you know, like I felt weird about this guest, it's, that's, that's not stating a fact, you know, so you could say, 
they brought more people um, and that was, you know, or they broke house rules and things like that. So, so that's being factual instead of just emotional. Get a second opinion, write your review, write it on an email and send it out to a friend or post it on our Facebook group and tell us, hey, can you just, um, you know, can you just read this and tell me, is it too snarky? Is it too personal? You know, can I tone it down? And don't send it to just your spouse or your co-host. Send it to someone else that does not have skin in the game. Just because, you know, if, if they are living with you or something like that, they'll say, you didn't say this or that. Okay, so, all right. So get a second opinion on your review, the review you wrote answering your guest. And keep it professional. No name calling um, or anything like that. And now, so... This is a review I got last year. They, he was a group of guys that were renting my home. And as you see, he starts with, I was very sweet and welcoming at first. And then he goes into, she has said some things that me and my group of friends were kind of scared by, and we were kind of astonished. Um, we had never done Airbnb, so we were asking what we needed for us. We made sure to be quiet and respect the owner as much as we could. But remember, we are college kids visiting, so we tend to go out and why not? Location is on point, but I don't think I'll be doing an Airbnb ever again. The host entered the house when we were not there and snooped around. Felt like an invasion of privacy and accused of smoking when no one had. We'll be booking, we'll be booking hotels here and out. So they wrote this on my platform, on my, as a review, there were a group of five guys and they stayed in my house and I was friendly to them. Um, I went in, I had told them that Sunday night is garbage night. So I went in and picked up garbage and told them that I was doing so. And the day that they were leaving, I had allowed them to leave their luggage on the hallway for them to come back for it. And as I'm coming into their space, and I'm going in with my exterminator, um, who comes once a month, we smell smoke and we smell pot. And I did not like it at all. And then not only that, but also they left all the ACs on, they left the doors open, they left a burning coffee pot on and dirty dishes. It was just a disaster. And I got really upset and I called them. And also when they enter the house to pick up their luggage, I was just not a happy person. And I said to them, look, I know you guys smoked and I will be letting people know on the review. And that's why they wrote this, okay? Um, so what I did was I was still a little hot and my biggest concern was this part of the host enter the house when we were there and snooped around because that's that's huge that's really big in my book so i responded uh you told me you were coming to new york for a conference not college kids looking for a fraternity house i entered the apartment after checkout time to come find a complete mess i stated what i found i agree you're better suited for hotel experience so this is my response to him um, I didn't say I felt used, I felt disrespected, or anything like that. I stated exactly what happened. Now, this is what you see now on my page. So their review, because it was so long, um, got cut out, but you still see my response. Okay? So um, that's what's there. Thank God. It's like page eight or ninth right now. It took me a long time to, to get there. Um, and so, but that's what shows right now, okay? Samantha has a question. Do you think Airbnb is changing the review systems since they're not showing value or location on your listing preview anymore? And I'm going to say yes. Either they're trying something new, and you guys know how it is. It's like Airbnb rolls things out and they try something new and then they decide not to um, go with it and, and kill it, kill the project. So who knows? I do hope they eliminate value on location out of the reviews process because I just, it's not a category that I'm crazy about. Okay. Um, so 
this is the review this is what you see now on my page so now and another case another review this just happened in august so you see how it started really great we had a great state at evelyn's apartment was a whole warm hose the guidebook was well put together and very useful i'm always glad whenever my guests love my guidebook but then if you open it more to, you see, like if you click on the more and you read, she wrote, we thought the bathroom was a little warm, but everything worked out well and we enjoyed lovely hot showers. So I have decided that I'm not gonna say anything to this because this is basically buried because this is what you see. Um, so the comment about the, the bathroom is buried into the more. Um, and this is a horror experience, horror understanding that the bathroom is not a brand new bathroom. It's an old house. Um, the bathroom is about 10 years old or so. So I don't respond. Um, uh, Linda says, should we always respond to negative reviews? I just ignore a horrible review by an intern. Um, and uh, my thing is, it depends on how horrible is the review. Is it something that, look, if you have... 20 positive reviews and out of 20 one of them is negative the people are basically going to think that that was a person that is never going to be happy all right so they're they you know they take it in stride they're not going to think like oh this is you know what am i going to do or anything like that okay so th they don't have an idea that this is a bad review or that your house is bad they might think more about that particular guest all right especially if all your other reviews were positive i chose to answer that particular review because of that part of snooping around the apartment that's huge okay uh, yeah, Heather um, asked uh, Heather asked i respond to all reviews even positive ones is that a good idea and yes, well, if you ans answer to all your reviews, and I don't do that, I do know of a host educator, Rebecca Morgan, who recommends for you to answer and acknowledge all your reviews. If you do that, it's fine. So it's, it is a good idea. I just don't do it. I'm lazy. I never started doing that. So it's, you know, I just don't. Um, so yes, you can. The other question is this then, be careful about what you're saying on that bad, on answering a bad review, all right? Just really be careful. If you guys want to, if you ladies and, and hosts, you want to post your response in our Facebook group and we will give you some feedback. There's a lot of tons, great, great Facebook group. All right. Now, don't be a hostage to a review. Airbnb has an extortion policy. If a guest is requesting refunds for a positive review, or you are offering a discount for a positive view as a host, if you're offering this, Airbnb frowns upon it. If a guest tells you, if you don't discount me, or if you don't give me this, or if you don't give me that, I will give you a bad review, you can contact Airbnb. And my recommendation to do is answer them on the platform. So don't text them. Don't answer, don't email them in their personal email, answer them on the Airbnb platform so all communication is there. Um, and just say to them, hey, I understand that you want to, uh, you want a discount for a positive review, I'm sorry, this is not how it works, and all that other stuff. So just do it on the platform and then contact Airbnb. And they will not allow that review to happen. And those are the only times that Airbnb deletes a review. They did not lead, delete the review of the guy saying that I snooped around because their statement is, that's their experience. So even if it's a lie, they will not remove it. There's, they removed um, reviews for very specific reasons. One of them is if they post your address, um, if they say inflammatory stuff, but for the most part, they will not delete a review, okay? Um, Linda's asking, what about a guest that plan, the plan, the plan to return, but I don't want him again because he gave me marks down on accuracy and now I'm on the verge of losing my super host status. Can I deny him because of a previous review? Am I not allowed to let him know because of his reviews? I cannot let him in again. Well, Linda, let me ask you a question. Will you ask him why? Because he, I mean, he clearly likes your home 
and you can have a conversation with him saying, hey, you know, I know you want to come back, but um, review is so important and I want to know what is it that I can, what is it that you felt it wasn't accurate because of this and that. If you're so busy that you get so many bookings, you don't have to tell him why you're denying him. You could just say, hey, I'm sorry, but I'm booked at that time. That's it. Okay. Um, Sue is saying, I have experienced this extortion several times. They blocked the reviewer, take it down in this circumstance. Exactly. So Sue would say, Airbnb will block the review or take it down. Extortion does not work. Okay, guys. Um, they host, they, Airbnb is very serious about that because it's not, it's not the right thing to do. Or for you to offer a, a discount to a guest. All right. Um, we do have some phone numbers at a, for Airbnb, and there is. It depends if you're a super host, you have an easier thing to contact them. A great way to contact Airbnb is through Twitter. Twitter. So tweet them and stuff like that. I guess has not left me a review. Should I contact them? Um, you know, Sandra, I read somewhere else how a host badgered a guest for a review, and she was this guest was also a host, and how. Um, and the host who was a guest felt that the person was so aggressive about the review that they don't want to review the person. Okay. So look, Airbnb will remind the guest about reviews. I don't think you need to do it unless you say it in your goodbye message to the guest or you have it printed out somewhere in your house. Um, you know, like, Hey, you know, thank you so much. If, if there's anything that I can improve, Please let me know. Understand that you know reviews are the lifeline of Airbnb and all of that. Okay. All right. Um, Ad, Ad, I answered your question. I think. Uh, okay. So Linda saying, I didn't. He said it was because I did not have a picture of the outside of my home, which I don't want to do because of security. What you could do, Linda, is um, have a picture of the street and not a picture of your house. Um, and just say, this is the street where I live at. And just tell him and say, look, I'm sorry. I mean, if you're clear with the understanding and tell him your hesitation, you could just be human. Let's be human with people. Okay. Christy's asking, what is happening if we decline people? Um, it depends how many declines you have. But if you decline a lot of people, they will close down your account. Um, you can reopen it again, but they will, they will feel like you're not, um, you're not taking it seriously and that, you know, you're just too busy. All right. Now, um, let me just, let's go, let's continue on. Do we have any more question? Okay. So list of descriptions. This is now when we're going to go with the great reviews. So this is a good review. They gave me this back from September, 2015 and I could, I haven't uh, updated stuff, but, um, so they gave me this amazing review. They say my space was spacious. I gave ample supplies. So I grabbed words from the different reviews in here. It was nicely designed. It was comfortable on site attention. And what I do is I use all of these words to build my about me description. All right. So on your about me that you only have a certain amount of words, I write, the beautifully, the beautifully designed apartment is spacious and comfortable for big groups. You will be pampered with on-site attention and curated New York guidebook. You will be glad to stay at Evelyn b, &B. So I'm using the guest words. I don't have to reinvent things. They are telling me what they like. They will tell you this is what's important to me because they're making it important to them. They're telling you, okay? So you go back to your positive reviews and use them on your description, okay? Exactly, I would say recent guests have remarked, blah, 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 that's a great work. Um, and Caroline, so another thing that you can do, which is this is something that I recommended to lots of people is the beds are very comfy with high quality linens. There's everything you could want and more. So in your captions, do not use the entire review. Just use what's important and what's featured for that particular room. Okay, so uh, she said this back on October 15. She has more on the review, 
but I made it just about the room, okay? And I said, high quality linens. So those are things that she mentioned that are important to her, okay? So you use a sentence, no more than a sentence or so from a positive review onto your captions, okay? And also keep it in quotes and put the name of the person. You could even put the, the, the month and year. I don't do that. I just say bye and they, the guest understand that is by your review by your guests, all right? Um, my dearest Paul, uh, he's a host out of Puerto Rico. He also has done some um, test text um, graphics and posted them on his listing. I don't know if Airbnb allows that anymore because I know that there was a whole controversy about having text on your photos. Um, so they might not allow the graphic, okay? Now your listing name, how do you pull, and I'm sorry, let me just drink a little bit of water. Um, Thomas is asking, how do reviews affect a host rank order on the site? Um, I think if it's more about if you have bad reviews, but I don't think reviews are affecting your rank order. Only if you're a super host, and a super host, it's based on reviews, um, and, you know, I mean, not the criteria, but it is about it. Uh, Quake is asking, can I copy and paste reviews onto my own personal website without Airbnb's permission, or is that intellectual property? I've done it. I, you know, I have it because they're my reviews. In addition to that, one thing that I do host is I actually have capture, I screen capture every review um my dearest pat my assistant does this for me we go in and grab every single review that i have on my listing should anything happen to my account should my account be closed should my account be deleted anything happen i have it somewhere else i have it on a dropbox folder but i have all of my reviews and i have and i currently do use it um um let me just show you my website and where I have the reviews. That's a good question. Um, let me see what else. I've done it and love it. Um, um, Isabel, based on my two years of experience as a host, finding guests can be terrible. Checking in and checking out. I think Airbnb should also have a category where hosts can rate guests and hold them to the same standard. Many guests don't show up there right whenever they want to well you say that when you're reviewing your gas i'm going to talk to, about that at the at the um, oh <laughs> how do you capture the reviews i actually um wrote it in my you do a screen capture and i will show you guys um i think i i could show you that how to do that all right let me just show you on my page how i have other um and we just Digress in here for a minute. Let me just show you something. Hey, I'm here. I'm gonna share another image. Okay, so this is my personal website of my home. Okay, so you're seeing this is um, the Evelyn house. So you see, this is my listing. I go it goes straight into the Airbnb site, um, and so this is some of the reviews from some of my my guests it also i believe is also in the listings portion of it um so you see there's some testimonials here as well so this is my personal account it goes to airbnb i book through airbnb so um so you see i say book and list book this listing on airbnb i know some hosts that have personal websites and what they do is they give them different options for guests to book whether Airbnb or VRBO or anything else, okay? I personally don't want them to book directly to me. Um, I like the idea of having a company that is um, accountable. I, I mean, look, and Airbnb might not be perfect, but I do prefer that, okay? So that's a way that you have, you pull your reviews out. All right, so let's go back to the presentation. We're almost done, guys. Look, it's 140. Oh my God, this is, this has been a long one. All right. Yes. So, listing name. So, the same way you pulled out for your about me, you pull the same information for your listing name. Okay. So, spacious, comfortable for groups, or nicely design, designed, spacious home. So, your reviews 
will give you the information on how to get, write a listing name and how to write an about me. Okay, use those words. Do not. You don't have to overthink it. You don't. You, your guests will come up with so much better language than you will. They will tell you exactly what's important and beautiful verbiage. Okay. All right. Um, it's based on only last three months of review or another time. Samantha is asking, when Airbnb evaluates host for super host status, is it based for the last three months of reviews or another time frame? It's for the last year. It's a year. Okay? So you cannot have any cancellations in a year. You can never have canceled a guest in a year. All right? Okay. So now what about you reviewing your guest? And I want you to remember this. Guest reviews are for the future host, okay? They're not for you. They already stayed in your house. They're for the next person. Where are they staying next? So ask, how was the communication? Was it clear? Did they disappear? Um, did they let you know when was check that they were arriving on check-in and things like that, All right? So how is communication? Were they clean? And look, I don't expect my guests to leave me a spotless apartment or cleaner than, than I gave it to them. But, you know, if they leave me a couple of dishes, I don't mention it because sometimes you're rushing out in the morning and you're trying to leave and then, you know, you don't have a chance to do the dishes. But how filthy did they leave me the pond? Did they have a party in the house and I didn't know about it in, in this mess? So, you know, ask that question. Are they clean? Are they quiet? Was communication well? Did they break any rules? If they broke any rules, then you mention it on your review. You might want to mention which rule they broke. Like something like, unfortunately, I cannot recommend um, this person because they broke this rule. Like I said, I believe those guests were better for suited for hotels, not for an Airbnb. And will you host them again? Uh, I, you know, that's a big thing. I want you to ask yourself when you are asking, you know, when you are when you're reviewing your guest, will you host them again? Will you have them in your house? And if the answer is no, why not? And then say that on your review. Say like, well, I, you know, they might be better if you, you have a shared apartment. They might be better on a private apartment, okay? So, you know, um, Michelle is saying this is the hardest thing for me, being nice and, um, I'm sorry, but I have a relied on past host review and how to guest break rules, how to party, and I'm not sure if it wasn't an illicit party. Look, the idea, exactly. If you have a negative um, review, you, if you review reviewing your, your guest negative, it has to be for a reason. If you have a bad experience with a guest, do not just say they stayed at my house. Why is it that you're not recommending this guest? It is our duty as host to protect each other because you will want that from me. You will want me to say, they were clean or they were quiet or they communicated well or they broke a rule, okay? Sandra is asking, do you think giving negative guest reviews can put off other prospective guests from booking? Why? I'm asking, I'm asking you this, Sandra, because you're not getting personal on your review. You stated in the facts. You waited 24 hours. Um, you might say things like, that that is not that is not an attack and i know how hard it can be but i imagine you have po positive reviews you have positive guests you've had good experiences so if one or two guests are not great it's okay if you mention it okay um Okay, so um, Alexine is asking because she found strawberries and chocolate stains all over my down comforter and sheets. Otherwise, they were great guests. Will you mention this? Um, I might mention it to them in privately, in a private message. Um, and I don't know if I will mention that. What do you guys think? Will you mention 
about that they ate food in the you know in your um in your bedroom and and you say that this is a house rule you have it in writing you mention it to the guest um you know you could say great guest i wish that we had not eaten on my bed since this is a house rule so you know say the positive you do a sandwich you say something positive you say something negative and then you say something positive because then the question is would you recommend them Okay, so Vesna is saying that she didn't have the she or he did not have the guts to write a um, recommend a non recommended but then you're hurting someone else. You're hurting another host. Okay, one of the things, um, yeah, look, stains are the 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 cost of doing business, and I agree. Like, I don't I don't write if they stain towels or things like that, but for the most part, I'm pretty careful. All right. Now, um, I do know of some guests that will give you the star rating on the guest review. They will say like, oh, three stars for cleanliness or, you know, great arrival or, you know, poor communication or something like that. So you could do something like this. But I want you to please be truthful and honest on your reviews. You have to. You have to be, okay? Um, you, it's all, not, it's for the next person. It's not for you. And then a tip that I do is mention your city, okay? So what I do in my reviews to my guests is I say, um, let's say Alexina stayed in my Brooklyn home or Alexina and her family stayed in my Brooklyn home. And then I say, you know, they were great guests, they were great communication, quiet, clean, we'll welcome them back anytime. Now, the reason for that is, let's say they're going to stay at another place and they're looking for another place. That other host that looked at that guest profile and reviews, if they're thinking of staying or they're thinking of traveling to your city, now they're going in and they look at your review and they could look at your space. Okay. So, um, you know, that is something that I do, and I think you could do that. It's very simple. It's just basically they stayed in my home. Um, if it's a group, I mention it on that. So, okay. All right. So that's that's a little tip for the afternoon. All right. Um, let me see if you guys have any questions. Do you think many potential guests are really looking to see how I review prior guests? Some people do, not everybody. I don't think they do. Um, the reviews I'm looking for from past hosts. I do not use instant booking. I access every guest before I was September. Caroline, I actually have instant booking and it has worked really, really well. And I'm going to do a class about instant booking and just why I recommend it. All right. So we just spoke about the review criteria. We spoke about bad reviews and how to handle them. How you're going to get your list in description and your list in name from your positive reviews and how to review your guest. Now, Let's say that guest that dinged me on accuracy. I want to tell you what I learned from it. What I learned was that I need to be clearer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure my stairs, and I'm actually going to put the measurements on um, in American standards and um, universal. So so it says you know the the how many inches and how many uh, meters it is and things like that, just so that everybody is very clear on how wide the stairs are. Okay, so. It's something I learned. Do I wish that, um, I mean, and, and that, do I wish that she didn't take me an accuracy? Yes, but she already did it, all right? So I want you to go back and look at your reviews. I want you to go learn from them. And actually, even the negative reviews, guys. Look, um, I know of a host out of London who's, who, had, who received a review from a guest who said, oh, the place was not as, all pristine as I wished it was and it happens look right now one of the things I'm doing this week is we're doing retouching and repainting because after a season of guests coming in now the walls get dinged things are not as clean as when they're the, the season started so that's what I'm working on okay that's one of the many things I'm working on so I want you to welcome the right guest and part of that, and I want you to feel calm when your next guest walks in. I want you to feel confident. I want you to feel that you have this because you have this. 
Now, if you need to come over and pick my brain, you're more than welcome to come over. I, we could talk about maximizing your price, your photos, your captions, which one are the best ones to have, the headlines are the names. We talk about house rules, which ones to write, because I know you have some house or you don't have this enjoy my house thing. And much more. We will talk about anything you want to. And for you guys to talk, I'm giving you a uh, 10% off. Um, so on the September 10th. So you just write webinar and you get 10% for off. We set up a time. I ask to get your listing before and I get send you a questionnaire and then we just talk all about your listing. In addition, I'm also selling the house manual. And as you notice, my guests mention my house manual in most of my reviews. They love it. One of the reasons people look at my house manual is because of all the information I have, not just about the house, but also about the neighborhood. And I sell this template. So it has multiple headers and themes from landscapes to cities. Um, or you could make your own. You could customize it. This is my dearest uh, host, Ken. He has a nudist home or naturalist, as he calls it. Therefore, he has, you know, this, this place is called Naked Palms. So you could actually put from sunsets to chickens. I know a host that has chickens in the backyard, so he's a header. Um, we put chickens to, you know, so that it's, you can make it your own and we have a template like that. And in addition to the house manual where I direct you on how to create one, you will get a neighborhood manual that you could fill in information about restaurants and playgrounds and what to do in your neighborhood and transportation, airport information, train information, bike information, taxis. Look, you know your home, you know your city, your guests don't. I, I want you to be very clear about that, okay? I also include an instructions manual, step-by-step. Step. There's also a class, and it's formatted on many different things. If you have a PC or if you're a Mac person, so it's on Word, on PowerPoint, on Keynote, you have no excuses to have a bad manual, all right? And this is from Judy Lone. I don't know if she's here tonight, but she's one of the persons that had bought the template, um, and she loved it, and it's really good and easy it's easy for you to do it is a template that you download and you fill out with your information you have it for life you could use it if you have multiple listings you don't have to pay for the multiple listings you just pay once and that's it and I know there's some digital ones out there um Sandra you know what I do I have um I have a a house manual even for my rental room and the reason is because I answer all the questions there I answer from Wi-Fi code to house rules to um, where's the new uh, the nearest restaurant where's the emergency room things like that I have it in there a great restaurant that I recommend it was the park with a good music and they have it in their space and they don't have to ask me any questions um, and you exactly you have it you could have it digitally and you could just send it to them But also I recommend that you have it in the house S People love it um, And they're so easy to use. Thank you so much Anna. and you know, they're easy to use easy to fill out If you're techie, it's just really simple. All right, so Go get it. Um, everyone will send it out automatically to them. I didn't know that. Thank you, Sue. So that's something you do. You could also put it on a Dropbox and upload it on a Dropbox folder and send them the link to your guests. So those are things that you could do. Um, send to them, let alone the actual list. Elizabeth, yeah, that's true. You know, look, you don't want to overwhelm your guests, but if you have it in the house, you keep it printed. And what you do is, if you want them to read information about the house, you have to give them information that they're interested on. And what is it that they're interested on? They're interested in finding out what's the nearest restaurant. How do I get here? How do I get there? Um, where, if I want to go to a bakery, where is it? They don't have to bother you. Believe me, this stops the questions. My book stops the questions. It's really crazy. Um, yeah, it's, um, I, I use it all the time. And as you see, my guests mention it, all right? Okay, so you do it once and you'll be done. I wanna say thank you for being here tonight, this, this beautiful, lovely Monday. And we're going to do 
a listing review if you up for it. If I have looked at your listing before, you cannot come in and give me your listing. So the way you show your listing, I'm gonna show you this uh, because I know some people always ask questions. And is, I'm sorry, I, didn't, I, sh I should have had this out from before, but I did not. Uh, your listing URL. I'm gonna show you this in a second so that you could go get your listing. So if you want me to tell, talk to you about your listing, about your particular stuff, just show it to me once. And this is how you get your listing URL. Let me show you that. Let's see my computer. Oh, and Lisa's already there. So this is, um, here it is. All right. Um, Muriel, call, text me, email me. I, I will help you get your, your stuff done. I do not want you to buy a house manual and for you not to do anything with it, okay? That is not the way we work here. I want you to be active and to have it because it's such a great tool. You have no idea. I'm only selling something that I know you guys will use because it's lovely to have there. So Marie, contact me and we will make it, we will have yours done, all right? Um, and look, Gretchen can, can, oh, I didn't know that you were a virtual assistant. I also have, um, assistant that can help you out with it. So let's go to our first room, which is Lisa's and this is how you, okay. I'm going to stop this. Lisa, you are brave. Oh no, Lisa, you, I do not have access to your, oh, because, uh, Lisa, you gave me the wrong information, love. Okay. Um, that's not your listing. This is your listing. You gave me like reviews. You gave me, you went here. Go here to your um you see your URL is that that's your listing. It has to say airbnb.com room slash rooms slash your number. Okay, that's it. All right. Now Viz Vizna. So we are going to do this. And my guests are coming back. All right, so. We have one. We have one person. Jason, I'm going to let Lisa find her thing. I only do two listings per class. If you want me to do yours, you're more than welcome to hire me. Um, we would talk way too much about Airbnb. All right. Okay, so I'm going to say right away, your first photo is not the best photo. I know you loved the, the little swans, and I know why you would want them to do that. But this is not an inviting image. Um, my recommendation, if you want, uh, is you see how it got cut off. It's either crop the photo so that you eliminate the top of it and eliminate this part of it and just have the bed with the swamps, all right? So that's my first thing for the first image because look at it right here. And then I want you, where are you located out of? Um, Serbia. Ooh. I love it. You guys like everywhere in the world. Um, what I want you to see is um, how you are seen in comparison with other people. But let's continue talking about this. So your first photo, I would definitely change it. Not the most inviting photo, not the most welcoming photo. Um, Okay, this is interesting. I will do the photos horizontal. This is like a hot dog, and the other one is hamburger, horizontal vertical. I will do them horizontal. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna say is this, okay. All right, I will move some of these images around. And like, let's say for example, this, I understand to travel is to live, but this is not really saying anything. Why would your guests want to stay here? What is it saying? Okay. Um, okay, this is a terrace view and it's image 12. This is, this could be your first photo. Okay. And is that the view that they have in the front of the apartment? Like, is that their first thing? You look, you're super host. You're getting there. And also, I want you to see, look at, look at, first you have the first photo here, and then if you go back to here, your next six photos, they're not really calling me. They're not saying to me, oh my God, this is a spectacular place. Um, 
And you see, I told you, right, that all I see now is like accuracy, communications, and cleanliness. You see that, that that's all I'm seeing right now, and this is not in my listing. So I would change that. I would change, move some photos around. I will then add the captions of your guest review here. So you are, so you could use a little bit of their marketing for them because you have some great reviews. Uh, enjoy a conversation, clean. So you see, you say the place is clean, the neighborhood is safe. Um, I would say even if I came in at four o'clock in the morning, um, you know, walking distance to downtown, the host is the loveliest host. So things like that, those are great things, Vesa. So you can just do this um, and just make a couple of changes on your listing, um, listing photos, okay? And if you post it on the groups, on the Facebook group, I will then comment again. I will say, hey, yes, you know, if you tell me that you did it or not. All right. Lisa, I am looking for you and I cannot find you. Um, all right, let me see if I could do this. Please don't make this harder for me. I, I need easiness. All right, let me see. I think, and I'm going to ask you if this is it. And nope, it's not it's still, I cannot find you. Lisa, I cannot find you. Where are you? Oh, uh, no, you're sending me the calendar, Lisa. You see managing calendar, that's not it either. Um, all right, I'm sorry, Lisa. You need to give me the right information. All right, so you see how, um, oh, wait, no, sorry, Colin. There was somebody else before you. So I did Lisa Vesna, and I'm doing Jason in Midtown Manhattan. This is going to be interesting since you're in New York, and my question to you is going to be, are you doing an illegal? No, is it shared space? Yeah, it's a private room. Okay, Jason. All right. I want you to look at your image right here, your first image, and it's that inviting. It's very manly. Um, um, it is a pretty room, but, you know, your first image, and I understand you want to like that rugged look and things like that. It just, I wish it was, you had a little bit more color. Okay. Is this your terrace? Why isn't that your first photo? Come on, Jason. Uh, Jason, I was third in line. I know, but because Lisa did not get in, um, I will make you guys techie, whether you want to or not. Okay, this needs to be your first photo, Jason. This, this image, it's New York City. I will even do a close up of it. All right. Okay. Now you have too many photos of your terrace. Okay. No, now you went crazy on me. So one photo from the terrace views, because it's going to be your first image. All right. Make sure you crop it well and make sure that you're using the right one. Then your next photos. I love that. I love that. You see what happens is color pops. You see that red, it just pops. This looks really nice and inviting and welcoming and everything else. Um, I will redo some of these photos, get Airbnb to come in and do photos for you, or if you have to do them yourself. Um, like this one is a little bit dark, so turn on some lights. I did a class on photos, so go look for it. Um, what is that? It's, Jason, I don't know what it says. So if I don't know what it is, why will anybody know what that is? Okay? So I imagine it's sort of a faucet that gives you different um you know what is that okay don't confuse me okay so do you lingerie okay no get rid of the the word lingerie here no your dresser if you want to um your fireplace optional heat okay that's interesting is this okay so is this the view from the room so i would say you know Okay, so I will put, you have way too many images of views. Um, so you have this one, and you have that one, and then you have it at night. Keep one daytime, one nighttime, and that's it. Uh, your closet, I will put, okay, yeah, you're saying hour. Um, yeah, you need to get better photos. Dude, you have a terrace, and you're in New York City. Show it off. You're showing it at the end. Um... Do you have any reviews, Jason? Are you doing this brand new? You have two reviews. Okay. Uh, you took care of everything. It's super beautiful and clean. It's fantastic. Location is the best. All right. So 
uh, friendly communicative with other than doing well, it's very clean and super clean. Okay, so Jason, you have a little bit of work to do. Um, you could even include a couple of the statements from your reviews since you have already two. Um, you have three guests. How can you fit three people there? You gotta use something about this listing. Come on, welcome to my house. Come on, Jason, you were in my class. You're here, Jason, you're here. Come on, you stop. This is seen on mobile, all right? So let me, Jason, makes the water you drink alkaline. Uh, okay, sorry, okay, we'll make that adjustment. And so that's, use this, about this listing, Use this word, get a little bit more description. Um, if you're gonna give measurements, also give them in metrics units, just because people, you remember you're getting Europeans and they don't know, I know, right? You gotta, like, if you're here, you're here to win. Come on, come on, you have a great space. You, This is beautiful. I wanna see probably a little bit more color in your apartment. Do you have a lamp next to it? Do you have uh, paper um, tissues? Think about your guests, think about what they wanna do. Um, and of course you're gonna get the, the house manual. I would like a little bit of art in your room. It feels a little plain. Um, like I wish I saw the room a little bit bigger. Or maybe you could do like a, a little, uh, a floor plan of the apartment to see you know, the logistics. I have it on mine, um, on one of my listings, so, okay. All right. So this is today's class. And <laughs> what Jason is saying, oh, Jason is getting in so much trouble. I know, right? Um, Jennifer San Diego, love the Lana, sir. Jason. Yes, um, Marie, I have, um, I'm in construction this week, guys. I have, I am getting all of my windows replaced in the house is 15 windows and yes caroline she loves her floor plans he has a floor plan so i'm getting 15 windows um replaced i'm closing the house for three days only three days including today so today um tomorrow tuesday and wednesday and then thursday i have guests arriving onto the top floor and then on the next two floors that somebody doesn't arrive until saturday so i'm giving myself a little bit of time but Believe me, I am going to be in construction. I'm gonna do a Facebook Live um, about how to prep for construction and you know what are good repairs to do. And in September, we're going to take money. I um, I don't know if, if you guys seen in my Facebook group, and I can't believe it, we've been at this for over an hour. I talked about how I make over six figures and I've been making over six figures every year for the last three years or so um, with just two listings. One is a private apartment and one shares with me. That's it, it's not, I don't, it's not rocket science. I don't wanna get more listings, not in New York, cause it's complicated, um, but we can all do it. It's so, so it's sort of like, how do we go about managing our money, okay? So, do you guys have any questions? Come on over to the Facebook group, The Hosting Journey. And you know, if you want to hire me, I am here. I'm available. Carol Marie, send me an email and we can just chat it up and, and decide when we're going to talk. I do not want your book to just be sitting there, okay? No, 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 we won't do that, okay? So have a great day. Have a happy Monday. May your guest be lovely and cleaned and not too much trouble and give you five stars, okay? Have a good one.